Easter. We rise this beautiful Easter morning to celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. And we recall this morning the waters of baptism, which wash us clean, which join us to Him and prepare us to experience the grace of His resurrection. Now and tomorrow and every day of our lives into eternal life. And so we begin this morning with the rite of the sweet sprinkling of holy water. Almighty ever living God, who will that through water the fountain of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us, and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body, and so approach you with hearts made clean, and worthily receive your salvation through Christ our Lord. Together, let us pray the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. testify 
that he was the one appointed by God as the judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name, the word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, for Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him
bring it to mortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw, wayfarer. Bright angels attesting the shroud and napkin resting. The tomb of Christ who is living. Yes, Christ, my hope is arisen.
the vocation of John the Baptist to be the one to announce the Christ in the flesh, to be the prophet of Jesus and to prepare hearts to receive him. And my friend said, is our vocation any different? No. Our vocation is the same as John's. Our vocation is captured in these words of Zechariah to his son. To be the prophet of the Most High. Zechariah's words to John are living words. Anyone who reads them is thereby called by God to be a prophet of the Most High. To prepare the way of the Lord by calling people to Christ. Anyone who reads these words is thereby called to have faith that in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who go in darkness and the shadow of death. That is, to have faith that we on earth and our loved ones in heaven are all looking forward to the resurrection when Christ comes again like a morning star rising once again over the earth. And not only to look forward to the resurrection one day in the distant future, but to live in the grace of Christ's resurrection today and each and every day. To live as Christ himself is living right now. Look at the way John lives his life full of vigor, full of zeal, full of life. Look at the way Mary of Magdalene, another prophet, look at the way Mary of Magdalene lived her life. In the fullness of her love, she got up early in the morning on the first day it was possible for her to visit the tomb of Christ. So full of tenderness was she that she arrived at his tomb while it was still dark that Easter morning. In the fullness of her love for him, she was the first to know in the darkness of that morning, Jesus lives. And as she lingered at the tomb in the darkness, the morning star rose in her heart. And it lifted her up. And it compelled her to go forth from that tomb with good news. And she ran. She ran to tell the apostles. And as the morning star of faith was rising in her heart, the sun was rising on the path before her feet, and Zechariah's words came true for her. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins, and the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high, shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet to the way of peace. The good news that she bore to the apostles is that Jesus lives. And the apostles, and you and I, we are the church. We are an Easter people. We are a people of the resurrection. The last five weeks of Lent were about preparing us for the next seven weeks of Easter. In a way, the whole world experienced Lent this year. The whole world gave up one thing or another. And in place of those things, the world is doing something new. What can you and I learn from this unique moment? Perhaps we are learning that we really can spend more time in prayer or with family. Perhaps we are learning we can live
live without all the things of this world and that we can't live without God or each other. Let your Lent roll forward into something new. Pause now on Easter Sunday just like Mary of Magdala paused at the tomb of Christ. And take time to notice what gives you life. What lifts you up. What gives glory to God in you. What proclaims the resurrection. What words and habits and actions make you living prophet? What makes you a living witness to the resurrection and the hope that Christ gives? Take time to linger here on this Easter morning at the empty tomb of Christ so that you can drink deeply of the faith that God gives you so that you can gather together all that gives you life. So that you can go forward in a newly glorified way. So that you can run forth from here and proclaim to all the world that Christ lives in you. And that the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who go in darkness and the shadow of death. And to guide our feet into Christ's way of peace. Thank you. 
praises today, renewing their vows to him with joy and gratitude for his victory of divine love. Let's pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer, who grieve, who are distressed in mind and heart, that Jesus, who brought unexpected exaltation to Mary Magdalene and the Apostles on that first Easter Sunday, may give them also a share of His rising to new life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our faithfully departed ones who were signed with the cross of Jesus, that the power of His glorious resurrection may bring them rejoicing into the wedding banquet of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Graciously hear these prayers of our hearts, Almighty Father, and grant them according to your loving plan through Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts 
these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant your peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth, hand on the Catholic and the apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise that they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you the eternal God, living in truth. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count upon the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Grant 
Him, O Lord, we pray, and to all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them and fill them with life. Bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my word, but only say the word, and my soul shall be you. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Alleluia. Therefore let us keep the feast of unleavened bread, of purity and truth. Alleluia, alleluia. And together let us pray and act a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth the masses in it. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.